So, in very simple words, I'm just going to explain the real story about ISIS, or this group of people um, that have risen uh, after being supported by the U.S., as you will see, uh, in the name of Islam and giving this uh, very negative image about Islam, and more specifically about the idea of the Khilafah, right? And so here is uh, one title, uh, Bush era advocates the splitting of Iraq into three parts. Um, so there was always this uh, theory amongst uh, American intellectuals that why don't we go ahead, do what the British used to do, which is to further divide a group of people uh, based upon their ethnic origins and their grouping. So they talked about the Kurds being one group and the Sunnis being one group and the Shia being one group. And I'll explain a little bit of how this comes into uh, play um, in a little bit. And then <clears throat> you have over here in USA Today where uh, when it comes up Biden, he also proposed split Iraq into three regions. And uh, this was in 2000 and six okay so in 2006 and when biden had said this uh he was laughing uh john mccain also believed in this and uh so there was always this strategy and this idea that iraq should be split into three groups and uh this is so that uh america can um deal with its own interests uh, overseas then, more recently, Hillary Clinton, while giving uh, a interview, she um, said the following, which I will read to you. Uh, she said, uh, let me bring this closer. She said, I know that the failure to help build up a credible fighting force of the people who were the originators of the protests against Assad. There were Islamists, there were secularists, there were everything in the middle. The failure to do that left a vacuum which the jihadists have now filled. Um, she's obviously saying this, oh, we should have acted and helped the people in the middle and the secularists and then the jihadists wouldn't have done this. but. The other side of this is that uh, this was a group being given weapons in Syria by the U.S. and uh, they helped, they did help build this group, uh, ISIS, into what it is today. And, uh, you know, um, as you will see over here too, As soon as this comes up, uh, uh, it's madness. U.S. supports ISIS in Iraq, uh, opposes ISIS in Iraq, and supports them in Syria. And so, uh, the idea was to create this group, uh, and why why create this group? So I'm going to give a little bit of history uh, about this. But I I also want to say there are some thinkers and intellectuals in France and other places who believe that the leader of ISIS, and I don't say this is necessarily true, but obviously one has to be cautious and take all things into consideration, especially in a time like this, where you never know what's really, especially with something like this, where uh, some it seems as if intentionally uh, the word Islamic State is being used, to, or Khilafah is being used to give Islam a very bad image, and that this is what, you know, Islam is all about killing innocent people and so on and so forth. ISIS leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, trained by Israeli Mus'ad, Mus'ad uh, is one. Uh, and then um, the other thing I want to kick uh, that's very interesting is that, you know, ISIS has a lot of American artillery. I mean, a lot of American weapons that cost $500,000 each. Now, the story goes like this, which I'll show you in the map over here. The story goes like this, you see this is Syria, and this area, this whole area over here is where ISIS is, they're actually in charge in this place, and uh, 
they had come over here and taken over this place and this is where strangely enough the Iraqi arms all of the army Iraqi army had left this place and went south when only a few hundred of the ISIS people went here and they took control of the American made weapons that America had left in Iraq over there so that's one of the ways that they became powerful now a lot of people are questioning the fact that you know what caused these military people in Mus'al from the government uh, Mosul, uh, the, uh, the city of Mosul, they left. Uh, why? Uh, just like that, like as if they were ordered to leave. Um, but anyhow, a little bit of history here is that this is the, uh, this area here is the, uh, the area where mostly it's Shia. And then you have the Kurds over here, and then you have the Sunnis over here. And you have the Hijaz area here. And, uh, so basically the Sunnis they were feeling uh, left out so it's not only ISIS by the way it's the entire uh, Sunni area that has aligned itself uh, with ISIS because they are not uh, there it's like they're being um, their rights are being kept away by the Maliki Nuri government uh, uh, the, the government of Iraq because it's now be become mostly Shia uh, is working against the Sunnis. The Sunnis have made alliances and one of them is ISIS. Okay, and uh, so that's why they are kind of uh, not conquering the area, but they're actually being welcomed in the area. But then it further becomes interesting because the US strikes, okay, are happening in this area so that they don't go into this area. Why? Because they want to keep them limited in this area so that Iraq uh, this area be it joins the Iran, this area becomes separate, and then this area kind of becomes itself. And then in the future, it will be easier to attack and bring down all of these groups uh, as is being already planned. So I just wanted to share this so you kind of understand the reality is that uh, you can either understand this, uh, there's uh, a few theories out there, you can either understand this that uh, this was a hornet's uh, a hornet's uh, hornet uh, hornet's nest. The idea is, you uh, bring together people that are like-minded, that are jihadists. You may say, of course, this would be a wrong term uh, from the perspective of Quran and Sunnah. But just to explain the idea, you bring common-minded people together, and then other common-minded people come together, and so this was a way of bringing all the people. Who a lot of these people that are following Baghdadi or you know they're just common Muslims they're trying to do the right thing and the Iraqis they feel stuck they can't go with the government they have to go with someone so uh, what is happening is terrible and there are no good choices for uh, the groups that are there having said that uh, this does seem like a conspiracy uh, and not even a conspiracy but a very strategically planned uh, uh, I, a, 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 an execution of something that is strategically planned and uh, in the process uh, you know uh, Islam is being given a very bad name uh, because all this is is propaganda and all this is is um, the works of others at at uh, the other people's ideas at work all other people's propaganda at work so since we're going to create this group named isis uh might as well have them do a few things that will give islam a very bad name so the main thing here is that muslims should never be afraid to talk about khilafa and uh, i want to end this with some sayings of the prophet peace be upon him on the issue of iraq specifically the Prophet ﷺ said, in the end of times, Baghdad will be destroyed by flames. So Baghdad will be destroyed by flames. A Baghdad has been in flames for the last 30 years since the first uh, Persian War, Gulf War. Uh, okay, chaos in Sham, which is Syria, Iraq, and Arabia. The Prophet said, there will be such troubles and calamities that no one will have a place to shelter from. These calamities will travel around Sham and settle over Iraq. So now, if we look at our map, 
the Prophet said these calamities that he's talking about, they'll start here, which is what happened. And then they will come into Iraq, which is what has happened. So ISIS was in Iraq, is Syria. As we mentioned, uh, you know, uh, the U.S. Uh, was supporting uh, ISIS. Okay, it's man, the U.S. opposes ISIS in Iraq, supports them in Syria. So uh, they were being supported by the U.S. here, and then they came over here, and now the U.S. is against them because they're crossing these boundaries. Okay, so... Um, These calamities will travel from Sham and settle over Iraq. They will bind the Arabian Peninsula. Why will that happen? This becomes very interesting because this lower part of Iraq is going right into the Arabian Peninsula. So all of the uh, facade and all of the fighting and the turbulations and the calamities that are happening here are going to directly affect Arabia. Okay. And uh, so the Prophet said... Uh, they will bind the Arabian Peninsula as, as an attempt to eliminate these calamities in one place, they will arise again in another. So what will happen is uh, you will try to smoosh it here, make it go away here, it'll go come back up here. You make it go away here, it'll come back here. So no matter where you press it, it the calamities or problems will come out from another place. So from every place that uh, you try to stop it, It'll, the calamities will come out from another place. Uh, and uh, from another place. Okay? And then the Prophet said the reconstruction of Iraq. The doom's place will not take place until Iraq is attacked. The innocent people will seek shelter in Sham, in Syria. Meaning they're going to go from here to here. Because Syria, if you know uh, about Syria, Syria has good people in it as is also mentioned in the sayings of the Prophet. And Iraq is where the fitan will be. Iraq is where Najad is. It is where the fitan will be. It is where the problems are. And so Syria, people of Iraq will go towards Syria. Okay. Uh, Doom's place will not take place until Iraq is attacked and the innocent people will take shelter places, uh, will seek places to shelter in Sham. Sham will be reconstructed and Iraq will be reconstructed. So even though Sham will also be deconstructed before its reconstruction, but uh, for the most part, uh, shelter could be sought in Syria. And there's another other sayings of the Prophet to this regard. Uh, and then, uh, if you come down here, The Prophet said, the people of Iraq will be divided into three groups. One part will be looters. Okay, so there are going to be those rich people that are just taking advantage of the situation. Just like, you know, when um, anytime there's a calamity, people start stealing from Walmart and stuff because they know that there's no cops there, right? So one part, so the chaos will allow uh, other thugs to, to do their thing uh, at all levels. One part will leave their families and... Uh, behind and flee and this is already happening and one part will fight and be killed okay prepare yourselves for doomsday when you see this so the prophet said when you see the situation in iraq you should start preparing for the doomsday as we are seeing today and uh, may allah uh, help us prepare for the doomsday because uh, as christians are saying the jews are saying it and muslims see it uh, the signs of the end of times are here.